Hi everyone, I'm Alex. Welcome to Resplansibility. Today we're going to be talking about winter weeds. So when was the last time you stopped and you looked at the weeds, maybe in your backyard or in a city park? Have you ever noticed the striking colors of a butterfly, maybe uh, the orange of a fritillary, land on something as overlooked as a dandelion? While we know these weeds aren't as supportive of native ecosystems, and they're not as ecologically beneficial as our favorite native plant species or plant communities, these play a vital role in urban ecosystems, and particularly in areas right where we have come in and destroyed native plant communities to build houses or malls or you know soccer fields. So in the absence of these natives, these weeds have actually come to fill a very important role in feeding pollinators and even birds. And so today we're gonna to be looking at some of those. And the coolest thing is that even if you don't have the time or the money or the know-how to put in a native plant oasis in your backyard or on your patio, that's okay because the easiest thing you can do right now, which is just letting the weeds go, uh, can be beneficial in its own way. So whether you're a property owner or maybe you live in an apartment, uh, there are things that we can do. Uh, we can stop spraying for weeds if we are currently. We can talk to our friends and family about the way that they manage weeds in their lawn, and we can talk to our neighbors. And so maybe together, you know, we can help provide ecosystems and ecosystem services for insects and the wildlife that they support. So why don't we go in the field and take a look at some of these weeds? So although the plants we're going to be looking at today are not native to the U.S., they're what are called cosmopolitan species, which means that they have traveled with humans throughout the globe, uh, and they can be found on most continents. And so here we have a fan favorite. This is dandelion, Taraxacum officinale, right? You see the easily recognizable flower. And if you ever look closely, you'll notice that they have this basal rosette of leaves that have these really deep lobes and these uh, kind of pointed uh, tips on the lobes here. It's very distinctive uh, rosette of leaves and again these all occur at the base of the plant. And then we have this bare stem here called escape that the composite head is found on. Dandelions are in the, uh, the Asteraceae plant family which means that they have uh, composite flowers. So all of these things that look like petals are in fact individual flowers and they're all born on this head, this capitulum here. And then we've got these modified leaves down here. These are called fillories uh, that subtend that, that composite head. The pollen of a dandelion is not as beneficial for wildlife as some, uh, you know, some of our native species. It's not as nutritious for, say, bees. Uh, it's still a valuable source of pollen for insects in this early winter weather before some of the, the bees' favorite plants might have come out. So it's valuable in that way. Okay, so here we've got a shade-loving plant, an annual. This is called Stellaria media, commonly known as chickweed, or sometimes it's called ten petal. Oh, there's a chickadee in this tree. I wonder if we can see it. Can you see that chickadee? <laughs> Oh, it's fast. Anyway, and here's a flower just starting to open up for the day. It's a little early yet, but again, we can see all of these this, this dense hair on the calyx or the, the sepals of this, of this plant. Now, you can kind of see here why it's called 10 petal. It looks as though there are 10 little white petals, but in fact, there are only five. And what they are is they're, they're sort of bifurcated or forked. Uh, so that it looks like there are 10. So we can see it's got these oval leaves that are on a short petiole and they're opposite. The leaves, uh, they occur at the same node. So you've got uh, these two leaves paired. And then you'll also notice that this plant can be quite hairy. 
if you can see uh, close to the stem there we've got quite a few hairs so while this isn't a native plant there are native species of moth and butterfly that are using this as a larval host uh, when their desired larval host isn't available and one of those is the dainty sulfur butterfly Yeah, this is a chickweed, Stellaria media. All right, so here we've got a fan favorite. This is henbit dead nettle, or Lamium amplexicali, in the in the mint family, the Lamiaceae plant family. Uh, So-called amplexicali because of the way that the leaves sort of clasp around around the stem. Here we can see that they don't have a a, a petiole; they're not stalked, but the leaves are, are wrapped around the stem. It's really distinguishable by these flowers. You'll notice they're purple, and like many members of the, the mint family, they're bilaterally symmetric. Or if you were to draw a line, you know, from the top to the bottom on one of these flowers, it would mirror, it would mirror itself on either side. Uh, they're almost always purple. Sometimes you can find some white populations as well, some white flowered populations. Uh, these are really important for uh, for nectar for honeybees this time of year because they're one of the only plants that's actually making a lot of nectar, uh, and they're pretty pretty easy to distinguish. Some birds are also known to eat the seeds. So yeah, this is henbit dead nettle. So here we've got one of the daintiest little flowers. This is Veronica polita. We can see it's pale blue and white flowers that are almost invisible unless you're actively looking for them. Uh, these don't open up until it warms up, so this one here is just now starting to uh, open up for the day. This plant does provide nectar for some butterflies, native and non-native alike, and we can see here that it's got these very dentate, very orderly little oval-shaped leaves. Uh, and this plant normally is uh, decumbent, it's on the ground. Uh, it has a cousin, Veronica arvensis, that looks very similar, but it is usually more upright and has a branching stem. So this concludes our talk on winter weeds. I hope you guys have enjoyed, and hope you guys have learned something new about the plants in your own backyard. If you'd like to hear more about other species of winter weeds, let me know in the comments below, and I'd be happy to do another video.